Sneak is an awesome static application security testing scanner, or SAS scanner. Today, we're going to walk through how to hook it up to your Azure DevOps pipeline, so it automatically runs scans every time you push code to your repository. Running security scans regularly is a must. New vulnerabilities pop up all the time, but luckily, Sneak keeps its databases up to date as well. For today's demo, I'm using the HackMe repository from GitHub. I've already pulled it into Azure. If you want to follow along and build this pipeline yourself, just Google HackMe GitHub and you'll find the repo easily. All right, let's jump right into the main thing we're here for, creating the pipeline. I'm going to use the Node.js template for this pipeline, but you should pick the template that matches your build environment. It doesn't matter much which one you choose, because all the commands we're going to use in the pipeline are pre-installed on all Microsoft hosted agents. First step, let's choose our image. We've got Ubuntu, Windows and macOS to pick from. I'm going to start with the Ubuntu image, and then at the end, I'll show you how to switch it over to Windows. Now in the script section, we begin by installing both the backend and front end of the HackMe web app. To get Sneak installed, we need to head over to their documentation and see what they recommend. Looks like we've got a couple of options here. Option 1, you could install the Sneak security scan task. If you go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, you'll find the right task there. It's free to grab. Then, you just configure it with your Sneak API token. But, that's not the route we're taking today. I prefer using the Sneak Command Line Interface, or CLI. The main reason is that it's the same way I set it up in pretty much every other CI CD service. It's a universal approach. On this page, you can see all the different ways to install the Sneak CLI for different operating systems. You can download the executable using curl. Just make sure you grab the right URL ending for your specific OS and processor. Or, if you're on a Mac, you can install it with Homebrew. For Windows users, you can use Scoop to install it. And there are even more options. You can also install it with NPM or use a Docker image. So, there are multiple options, but for Ubuntu, we'll install it by downloading with curl. We just need to swap out the macOS URL for the Linux version. Now, if you've worked with other CI CD services before, you might be noticing that I'm using curl and npm without actually installing them first. So, Let's take a quick detour to see what commands are available in Azure DevOps. Here's the table of the machines that are available. We're using Ubuntu Latest, which is version 22.04. To see what software is included, there's a link right here. Let's click that. There's a ton of different dev tools and package managers to use, all pre-installed, so you don't have to install them. There's NPM right there. And if you're a Java person, you've got Maven and Gradle. Let's scroll down to the Installed App Packages section. And there we go, we see Curl. This page is definitely a good one to bookmark if you're ever wondering if a specific tool is already on the machine. All right. Next up, we're going to install Sneak to HTML. This is a handy little tool that can create HTML reports for us. Then, I'll also make the directory for the scan results. Before running a scan, we need to authenticate with Sneak. That means grabbing an API token from sneak.io. I hope you've already signed up there and have a user account. It's free. Once you're logged in, Go to your account settings and you should see your token right there. Now, we need to create a new variable in our pipeline to store this token.
make sure you click the checkbox that says, keep this value secret. We definitely don't want this token showing up in our logs and potentially leaking outside the dev team. Here's a quick example of how to use this secret variable in a bash script. And above it, you can see how to use it in Windows. The last thing to keep in mind about variables is that secret variables need to be explicitly mapped. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. So, to actually use our secret variable in our script, we need to map it as an environment variable. We're finally done setting up our environment, and we can actually type in our scan command, sneak test. I'm going to add the parameter all projects, because our HackMe app has both a backend and a frontend as separate projects. Sneak test is going to run an open source scan, or OSS, it checks all your frameworks, libraries, tools, and other dependencies to make sure they don't have any vulnerable versions. I think we're ready to try out our first scan, so let's commit these changes and run the pipeline. We'll add more details later, but right now it's a good idea to just check if our basic pipeline setup is working. And there we go, we've got our scan results. If I remember correctly from other Sneak projects I've worked on, Sneak will actually stop the pipeline run and throw an error if it finds vulnerabilities. So, if you don't want your pipeline to fail if vulnerabilities are found, just add the continue on error true parameter to your pipeline. So our first draft of the pipeline was successful, and now we can proceed to add reporting and also another scan. First, I'm going to add a parameter to our sneak test command to save the output in JSON format. Next up is the sneak code test command. This command runs a real SAS scan. Instead of just checking version numbers like the OSS scan, this one actually digs into your code and tries to find vulnerabilities in your web app, even if everything is up to date. I'm going to save the output of this scan in serif format. Serif is a really useful format if you want to see the vulnerabilities directly in your code editor. At least, Visual Studio Code has an extension to view vulnerabilities with the serif file. Now that we've saved the outputs of both scans to files, we can use the sneak to HTML command to create a report that's actually nice to read. If we want to view the reports, we need to publish them. So let's Google a way to do it. These lines of code look promising. Let's copy and paste them into our pipeline. And that's it. Our pipeline is now ready to go. Let's commit these changes and admire how nicely it runs. Looks like both scans ran without any issues, and this time the pipeline didn't end in an error. Well, maybe it's because I added reporting. I kind of thought it would still error out if vulnerabilities were found, but hey, what do I know? The publish artifact step was also successful. Now as you can see here, it doesn't seem to show the actual report files we're looking for, but if we jump over to the job view, there's a link. And there's our OSS scan report. You can see there's a good amount of detail about each vulnerability. And here's the code scan report. You can see the exact location of the vulnerability in the code and also some helpful analysis on how to fix it.
All right, now let's take a look at how we can tweak our script to run in a Windows container instead of Ubuntu. We could install the Sneak app by downloading it with curl, just like we did with Ubuntu, but I'm going to show you another way. The documentation recommends using Scoop, but unfortunately, Scoop isn't pre-installed in the Windows latest image in Azure. Luckily for us, NPM is installed in the Windows image, so we can use that instead. Just add Sneak to the line where we're already installing Sneak to HTML. The way you use environment variables in a Windows command is a little different. You need to enclose the variable name with percent signs. And that's pretty much all the changes we need to make. Let's see how it runs. I've run into some hiccups with Windows containers in past projects, so it'll be good to see what happens here. Okay, the publishing step failed. Path does not exist. It looks like it didn't create the folder where we were expecting to save the reports. Let's take a look at the scanning step to see what happened there. It did install the HackMe backend and frontend, and it looks like it installed Sneak and the HTML reporter too. But it seems like the Sneak authentication and the actual scans didn't run. That's strange. This has actually happened to me before. I don't really have a clear explanation for why this is happening, but I can show you a workaround. This is the pipe operator. It's a YAML syntax operator that takes your script and passes it literally to the Azure engine, keeping all the new line characters. It should work in Windows, like I showed you how it worked in Ubuntu, but it doesn't. So another way to do this is to use the greater than symbol. This operator removes the new line characters from your script and turns it into one long line. This means we have to add the AND operator in between each command, which is how you separate commands in Windows when you put them all on one line. I know this isn't really the ideal way to do it, because there's a limit to how long a single line can be in the Windows command prompt. It's around 8000 characters. But let's be realistic here. If the best way isn't working, sometimes you just have to find a solution that gets the job done. And there we go, now the script ran perfectly. And that wraps up today's tutorial. I really hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please share it with your colleagues.